Wow, man, wasn't that freaking awesome? Yeah, so uh, obviously I've got some intros, yeah? Um, so uh, we're going to play a second one in a moment. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna have three of them, and then I am gonna ask you guys uh, which one you selected. That was number one, uh, number two in a moment, and then we're gonna go on to number three. Yeah, but in the meanwhile, I thought I'd share this. Um, I am now polishing up these little highlights on this piece that I've uh, um, ammonia fumed. So to give you an idea what this piece looked like, so that's the finished piece. I was quite happy with that, and then I thought I'd uh, be the mad scientist and uh, start playing. Yeah, I, I never pulled my mic closer. I am, man. Sorry about that. And then that now obviously screwed up the camera angle. Yeah, dodgy camera work. Nothing, nothing like you'd expect on this channel. But anyway, so I've started cleaning that off. Yeah, so that was what it originally looked like. That's where we're going at the moment. Yeah, so uh, dark patina on it, man. I like that. I really like that. So I am doing those little rivets. I'm bringing them back to a nice bright shine. And I thought I'd share how I do that because it, it really isn't rocket science. But if you don't know, well, then you don't know. Yeah. So I've on my flexi shaft, I have got a brass bristle brush. Step on the pedal. She slowly turns. Yeah, so I've got my Optivisor, which is a two and a half time magnification. I've got this thing zoomed in fairly closely. Let me just get this mic out of my face. Yeah, and then uh, we picked one that I'm working on at the moment. And we start brushing. Be careful not to go too deep so that I don't uh, take the peanut patina off the back. Only trying to get one side at a time. Moving on to the next one. Slowly, slowly bringing that one piece up to a nice shine. And this really doesn't take long. But she does demand a, a measure of concentration. Whoa. Okay, so now we turn around. Am I still in focus here? Here we go. And I do the other side. spot one that you've done uh, a bit dodgingly you don't touch that up yeah and that is it i think this one is all done okay so that one don't drop it so now i'm going to change hand pieces because i'm lazy i'm not just going to take the thing off and rip the entire hand piece off and then fit another hand piece So that's if you're lazy and you don't want to change tools. Right. So now I've got a Crytex wheel, which is a rubber wheel, um, and it is um, uh, what's it, abrasive impregnated. Yeah? And we're going to use that to clean uh, that section out there. Because I want that nice and shiny like I did that one back there. Come on, focus now. Uh, the young lady doesn't want to focus, does she? Come on. So you're going to play with or not? Apparently not. Oh, come on. Problem with bloody technology. There we go. So, see that little... That there. So, hold on. I'm going to just on this camera. Let me just take the autofocus off. Just give me two seconds. Sorry, guys. And then manual focuser. Can I do a better job than the camera? 
let's keep it there. Where does she want to be? She wants to be there. Oh, nice. All righty. So on the manual focus, I can't set it as close. And obviously, the, the auto focus on that close doesn't uh, want to play with. Yeah, but the next one is I want to clean that there. But before we start, I'm going to run that 10-second intro again. Um, so hold on. We're going to run a second one. Well, let's run the first one again. So we've got 20. Obviously, and she just continues as that, yeah? This is the second intro. And that one doesn't have uh, sound. So, via comments, yeah, let me know one or two. The flamey one or the, the bluey, stylish, what, 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 what one. <laughs> yeah, Robert, you know that, man. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I suffer from multiple handpiece disorder. <laughs> Sean, how's it going, bud? No, no, man. No, no. This is only uh, 19 minutes past seven in the evening, um, and I still get to play. Yeah, so I want to finish that off, but I want to show you Crytek's wheels and, and prepping, preparing a Crytek's wheel. I'm pretty sure I do have another handpiece, so let me pull that out. And uh, this is purely in the interest of saving time. So this is my my old faithful. Yeah, come on, baby. I can't get it in, man. That's a problem. Oh, there you go. Okay, so this one just has the wheel on it. Yeah. So to shape that wheel, you would then use a. Oh, come on! A test cut off this. So Moore's disc, it's just a little, looks like a little angle grinder cutting disc, obviously just a lot smaller. And uh, you can use this to shape whatever shape you want the rubber wheel to be. Yeah, so obviously I want a round indentation, so I'm going to shape this to the curvature and the thickness that I'm looking for. Nice and round. Now that fits that perfectly. Yeah, so if I do this, you'll now see that it fits that groove absolutely perfectly. So now we go really slowly. And we just take that out. When I say really slowly, I mean extremely carefully, yeah? You don't want to slip. And you'll also notice that my hands are supported all the way. On the bench peg, I've actually got my two fingers linked in and it's sitting on top. And then this is here, my thumb sits on the workpiece. The workpiece is held by three fingers. Four fingers, one, two, three, four, and I'm rotating and supporting. Nothing is hanging in the air. And that is all just to try to limit that I am not missing a step here. Not trying to go too far, easing in, adding pressure, and then coming up. In other words, feathering, not the cut, but the, the, uh, the cleanup, and then turning around, working in the opposite direction. just to make sure that I'm getting both these edges on both sides nice and clean. Because those edges are sharp and I do want them to, to pop. And there we go. So now that centerpiece is nice and poppy, yeah? So now 
these little footies, fins I've got in here. Just stand that up, right? I need to rub my nose, man. I've been snuffing <sighs> Crytex wheel dust. So I want to flatten out my Crytex wheel again. So now I want to run that on there without marring my, uh, my nuts at the back here. Yeah? And I just want to highlight that upper edge. Don't screw up now. And running at a slight angle will keep the that thin edge from digging into the crisis wheel too much. But it's going to happen. I want to run that one as well. And now I want to do that deep one, but I've now got a slot in my Crytex wheel. Yeah, there you can see it right with my finger, that slight little slot there. So I need to flatten this thing off again. So there's uh, different colors in these abrasive wheels means different uh, abrasive, whatever. It is not equivalent to a 400 grit or a whatever. Goldsmiths or jewelers, they talk about uh, fine, medium, bladder, bladder, bladder. So what this is, I don't know. The blue is fairly fine, but it's not the finest one out there. I use a white, which is the most abrasive. Um, then blue and then black if I need to uh, get really funky on stuff. So do a fairly high polish. And that is what I want to do on the handle. Now you'll see the difference between the bronze and the brass. The bronze has got a deeper goldish color where the brass is like common brass color. Yeah. So let's do that one again. And I want to show you the original one again so there's the original and here's this one now that is a lot freaking cooler man that is a lot a lot a lot cooler so once again that freaking auto focus thing yeah so let's play around with that camera setting again sorry guys We'll hit autofocus and see what it does now. Will it focus on me? Oh, there we go. See, now that is freaking awesome. I'm loving that. I am liking that. Okay, so that was the one piece. Now for the cross guard of the quillen. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do here. But I do want to polish up the, the little knobs on the end or the finials. Yeah, those definitely need to be polished up. So the finials need to be polished up. Come on, stupid camera. Finials need to be polished up. So little dots on the edge there. And I do want to do these little highlights in there exactly as I had it on the original. The original, the slots there. God. Auto freaking focus. It wants to focus in the bottom of my bench. So these slots there. I want to tidy them up, then the finials, and then maybe the slot there. I'm not too sure whether I want to do the other one as well. Maybe. We'll see. We shall see. All right. So, number one, shaping that Crytex wheel again. Yeah. So, I want to get, uh, do I get around? Do I not get around? What am I going to do there? I want to actually use the other one, which I already thinned out. So, done. Stick the other one in there. Come on, baby. So that one is already thinned out quite a bit. Let me just see whether it will fit in there. It's going to fit there. 
Yeah, so let's do that one first. Is this camera playing with with the focus or not? Okay, so there's the first one. Let's do the other side. Nice. I do think I need to do those innards as well. Bit more concentration required now and you'll notice that i'm stopping my wheel before i bring it up before i put it back in starting the wheel in the groove Okay, guys, I'm, I'm liking it. Okay, so that's cut. Now, I need to figure out what the best angle is for this, but that wheel isn't broad enough. Yeah. So, we flip hand pieces again. Now, this is a lot quicker than trying to uh, refit bits and bobs. You'll notice I've got this one extended quite a bit further out. That's just to give me clearance on whatever piece I'm working on. Not even on camera. <sighs> Is this focus still screwing around? Is it? Let's see. I see there's a couple of comments. All right, so Robert says number two. Wiley is saying fire. Okay, so fire was number one. Yeah. Uh, Sean's the number one. The blue one, which is Neil, says two. Uh, what you got? Oh, Sean, dude. You keep safe, buddy. Uh, where do you get hold of Crytex? Um, the Crytex wheels um, in South Africa, they just refer to as rubber wheels, rubber finishing wheels. So just go to uh, Goldsmith and Jewelry Supplies, Kate Watch. Um, I don't know what the guys in Durban are called, uh, but they're all over the place, man. Any reputable jewelry supply store will uh, be able to sort you with those. And this camera is really kicking my ass today. So 
Let me try to do that again here. It's on freaking auto and it still doesn't want to do nothing. I'll probably have to reset the entire bloody camera. Now we're going to auto it, apply it again, go, go. Come on, brew. That's better. Yeah, man. Play the game. Damn it. All right, so. So Crytek's wheels, you can get them anywhere. Um, locally, the guys are just call, calling them uh, rubber wheels. You want the blue rubber wheel. These ones I'm using specifically come from Cape Watch. I like the quality of their stuff. Goldsmith have got them as well, but they've got weird-ass colors, and I don't know what that means. So uh, I just order like 50 of them at a time because I do use a lot of them. It gets really expensive really quickly. So uh, ask for a price before you just say, hey, send me 50. There we go, man. Uh, sorry about the camera, man. This is really... <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Must perform... Wiley, what the hell did you do, dude? Get another one. It's easy. Beg, borrow, steal. Make a plan. Sell your wife. No, no, not your wife. You married her for a reason. Your your mother-in-law, maybe. Yeah. Strengton, how's it going? And I'm I'm joking. I, I actually like my mother-in-law, yeah. Uh Mr. Todd, how's it going, brother? Thank you, sir. That's appreciated, man. Trent, let me know what you're up to, buddy. Am I in camera here? Yes, I am. Maybe I should look at what I'm doing and not on the screen. Yeah. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, rule one. Yeah. So I, I don't have my work lights on because that obviously screws with the camera. And it is fairly late. So I'm going to, right after this little strip, I'm going to do the finials. Polish my knobs. These ones here. Just gonna give them a light brush. I actually want to do that with the, not with the Crytex wheel. I want to do that with the. See, and this is why you spend money, because I like just the hand pieces. But now, obviously, keep in mind, I've been collecting hand pieces and flexi shafts way, way longer than I have been making knives. My wife is a goldsmith for 20, 20 plus years, yeah, and. uh I have got plenty of these things. At the, the goldsmithing studio, there's like, I think it's like 11 or 12 Fordhams, probably 16 hand pieces. So, uh, I mean, if you, you're used to working in a certain way, then. Uh, I mean, this is, this is the new one. Yeah, so that's the one I got yesterday. So the Fordham hand piece bought myself earlier this week got delivered yesterday yeah so that is it there's the original one that i bought with this flexi shaft probably 12 years ago yeah still runs still runs the chuck is after odd 12 years that little round hole is now oval so it becomes more difficult to to open it up and you screw up your keys and these things are fairly expensive if you replace them yeah so when you buy yours, you get one. Yeah, if you buy your flexi shaft, or if you buy a replacement handpiece, you get one. Uh, just get an extra one. <laughs> and then this one here is a new Chinese ripoff. This is a, a Baden Baron brand, which I can tell you now sucks. Yeah, run this thing for five minutes, and the handpiece is so fucking hot you can't touch it. So it's obviously got cheap ass bearings. Um, I've literally had this thing now for three days, and that hole is already oval. Yeah, so good luck for the guys that buy that. Spend the thousand five hundred bucks versus the five hundred rand. Yeah, don't waste your money on this thing. Don't don't buy. Save the money. I mean, the bottom hand piece. Our guys are selling it for a thousand five hundred rand for the entire fucking machine. 
That's the quality you're going to get. Not this, yeah? Just because it looks like a Fordham, doesn't make it one. There's a reason a Fordham in South Africa is 6,500 Rand. Save up, buy that. Buy one, sky once. Put it in perspective. Go and do a research. Do your research. Search for bar and that brand online. You'll only find it in one place. And that's in South Africa. Sold by one company. It's not an international brand. And then go on to Banggood, right? And then have a look where it comes from. And then ask yourself, do you want to spend your hard-earned cash on that piece of crap? I don't. I'm biased. Yeah. I don't like the barn. I've got fucking, I, I've literally, in the last two years, I have bought four of them. And they're all in a box over there. Let me show you. On the ground, where the hell? Lift this up higher. See that box over there? Right there. See the hand pieces? Check the flexi shaft. Just look at that. And that's just money down the drain. Don't spend your money on real shit. Yeah. Spend your money on the real stuff. Don't make the mistake. Yes, because you want one and you can afford the cheap one. Don't buy the cheap one. And then people go, yeah, but they don't make them like they used to. Yeah. Previously, you only got quality shit. Yeah. Now you've got 10,000 shitty brands and one quality brand. And what do people do? They go buy the shitty brand and then complain that the thing breaks. Don't. Don't. Okay, so that was my rant. I'm full of rants today. It's apparently Saturday is rant day. Uh, look at that. I like that. And why is he smiling? Because I'm polishing my knob. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate the humor, buddy. JB, how's it going, dude? Welcome to the family. Well, you are part of the family. Welcome, welcome back, man. I'm, I'm glad I caught you. Uh, who's in here? Thanks, brother. That's appreciated, man. Who else is in here? Uh... <laughs> Sean wants to know whether I've got more. I have got plenty knobs, dude. There's one I really, really care about, and the rest are, well, yeah, there's, I don't really care about them, although I pretend to. But this one here, these two or three here, so four in my shop, yeah? There's only one that I really care about. These three, I want them shiny, and that's it. Don't particularly care about them. <laughs> cool. Sorry, Trent, what are you saying, dude? Uh, They try to figure out what is wrong with your current grinder. Send me send me photos and we'll try to figure that out. Before you spend real money and and uh I know upgrade to something that is a tad better, but not really, because the, the really good stuff is really expensive. If we, if you're talking about the best machine I've ever had the privilege of working on would be um the uh Derek Rausch grinder. But that thing is thirty five thousand South African rands, yeah. That's a big ass machine. That's a beautiful machine. And you know what? I know a guy that has two. He sold all his knife making equipment and he bought two of those dairy grass grinders. And I know why. I know why. I would love to have one of them. But I, I still, I mean, I do this full time and I, I, I find it extremely difficult to justify it. But I'll probably end up with one. But then no one will even get to look at it. Yeah. Never mind uh, work on it. But yeah, man. So. Let me know, yeah? Um, so you saw my grind room. Trent, you've been here so many times, man. You've seen my grind room. You've seen my grinders, the self built grinders. I mean, those things work like an absolute charm, yeah? Done. And it's time, a couple of hundred brand. That's it. The, the steel work is the cheapest part of a grinder. Uh, Mr. Kelly, sir. <laughs> you, sir, are the coolest guy on the planet. Um, I just need to once again say that uh, in my um, apocalypse dream team, yeah, you are the team leader. Done. That's it. The kick-ass dude. Yeah, he keeps everyone in line. <laughs> Me included, because you know I'm going to cause shit. Yeah. <laughs> Buy once, cry once. That's a motto, man. And, and it took me years to actually like start following that. 
Um, I mean, my lathe, my metal lathe, my uh, milling machine, I bought what I could afford at the time because I believed that that would make my knife making better. It did not. Actually, the one machine, the milling machine, I actually sold. Yeah. And a couple of years after, I bought that back to, to the mate that I sold it to for 500 Rand more expensive. And Altinas went and he said, well, that's storage fee. Yeah. So uh, I was fairly lucky. And I recently rebuilt and rebuilt it and uh, put like proper high end bearings in, and now that thing sings like a little charm. But I use that to uh, to mock to make burners. Yeah, not not nice. Sorry, I'm I'm having a cigarette, and we might as well change the camera view. Yeah, because those knobs are polished, and while I'm talking crap, I might as well. Uh, JP, how's it going, dude? So are they prosthetic knobs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, look at my face. I've got this slight freaking blue tinge. And you see, this is the reason you wear optivizers. Yeah. So everything you look at gets a blue tint. And when you take them off, you've got a no more blue tint. But now one thing you need to remember is you're not going to rub that because that's an abrasive. So that's why you've got a desk brush. Yeah. Ask me how I know this. You know how many lenses I've replaced on this freaking optimizer? And this is a number five, number five lens, which is a two and a half times magnification. So everything I do, whether I hand sand, whether I am taking a splinter out of my finger, whatever, I do under that. Why? Because I'm as blind as a bat, man. I'm really as blind as a bat. So we're going to do a, a quick fit up now the the threaded rod that i have in here is a stainless high carbon yeah so it's not long enough this is purely the test up test fit up one um, and then we do the handle at the back things aren't gonna line up are they Oh, hell, that's so close. Let's see, but I don't want to lock it up. There's about another mill in the turn. But this blade has got a slight warp to it, so uh, I need to go and retemper that and straighten that. But, yeah, man, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. So let's set up the second cam again. Hopefully this thing will focus on that now. Will it? Let's do that. Come on. There we go. And then she loses it again. And then shall she focus again or not? Oh, this thing is kicking my ass. All right, so let's put it down on the desk because obviously it wants to focus at the back there. And then do this. There we go. That is a lot better. Yeah? That there is a lot better. So that there is a lot better at looking than looking at me. So uh, we're going to take Trent's comment off. And I'm going to show you the original. Let's try to kind of get the same angle here. And what she looks like now. Drooping cameras. Drooping camera. Yeah, shall we get the same? Do we get the same? Kinda. That's where she's at the moment. I like this one a lot freaking better. Yeah. So that is pure ammonia. And that's stuck on bronze. In other words, from there. So I did a patina on it. And uh, I really wasn't happy with that. Um, it was okay. And it's pretty much uh, what I've done on all the other ones. But I wasn't happy with that. Um, that. 
And it's a lot bluer on camera than it actually is. A lot bluer. So let me put some more lights on. Yeah. Sorry. It's now getting my gooseneck light out here. It's still blue. It's still blue. Who did know why? No, it's still blue. Okay, so apparently she's blue. We can put the gooseneck off. But that's it. So let's go back to comments. Anyone got any questions? You've come to the conclusion you don't like the three-wheel grinder. We'll we'll have to discuss that because upgrading from a three-wheel to a uh, standalone machine is going to cost you an absolute fucking fortune. Um, it is. There's nothing wrong with the three-wheel. Um, it's got its advantages. It does have its disadvantages. Um, but yeah, man. I personally don't like the three-wheel, but it is my preference. Yeah, well, my preference. My, my I'm full of shit. I just like the, the two wheels. Excellent, man. It is the only thing. I mean, these optimizers are they hellishly expensive. Um, and get the proper brand one again once again. Excellent, brother. Uh, get the get the proper one. Yeah. So uh, don't don't skip. Get the the brand name because you can find uh, they are are uh, you get lenses with LEDs built in with a battery pack on the side. There are upgrades. You get extra lenses. Um, you buy the thing with a set lens in it. And you can just go and buy an extra lens. Um, and you get up to a 10 times magnification. Um, and uh, I know Alec has got one, Alex Steele. And I, I played around with his, and that thing just gave me such a headache. Uh, 10 times magnification, it's, it's, it's in your face. You miss nothing. But I couldn't work with it for more than maybe 10, 15 seconds, maybe a minute at a time. That really tires out your eyes. Um, but if you don't want to spend the bucks on that, you go to uh, your drugstore yeah, and buy these prescription lenses. Chop reading glasses, and you'll see it's got a plus two, plus three, and that's the amount of magnification it does. So what that does is a magnifier in the standard frame glass, and that's it. Um, I had one, an extra one that was a spare one, a two and a half times magnifier. And uh, I gave that to Sean, if I'm not mistaken, when he started doing bench work. Bo, thanks, brother. How are you guys doing? Oh, man, we don't speak anymore. Are you still on WhatsApp, Bo? Um, if so, just let me know what your, your number is. Mine haven't changed. So uh, I'm going to give you my number. Uh, so now it is plus 27. Eight three four five one three one zero five. So uh, my number will now be posted to various destinations. Feel free. So there we go. There is my number. Yeah. Anyone wants to contact me via WhatsApp, um, ask for advice, whatever, you are more than welcome. Keep in mind that there is a time difference wherever you find yourself in the world and between me and South Africa. Um, so Central US um, time, we're six hours ahead of you guys. So for the past week, I think I mentioned this already twice, um, I, I receive phone calls from the US at like three in the morning, and then I don't answer them, Yeah. <clears throat> no brother it will not come off so let me show you what i mean with it will not come off there is a brass brush yeah so we got that there and now i polish everything the blue doesn't come off anymore doesn't matter what I do, the blue doesn't want to freaking come off. I now need to take mechanical action if I want that off. Yeah. So uh, she's still there. She's still blue. And that's how I took off the existing patina. See there? It doesn't do anything to it. Nothing. 
But when you're here in two weeks and she's still here, and now this is droopy camera again, and uh, she's still here, you're more than welcome to try that for yourself. Yeah. It just doesn't take it off anymore. So if I now want it off, I need to take it off from mechanical needs. Like the brakes of Chrysler wheels in to do those highlights. I do like that. I do like that. But this blade, I'm going to have to black completely and not work the highlights in Damascus. Yeah, so you just black. Done. And then I'll come back with that same blue Crytex and uh, do those highlights again. Yeah, so those were just polished in and with sandpaper around a three millimeter needle file um, and a 400 grit sandpaper after the edge, 400, 600, 800, and 1,000, and then the blue Crytex just to polish it up. Just to add a bit of contrast, yeah? And it follows the lines, and I like it. The uh, fullers in there were hand cut with ball burrs on the three facets. Takes a bit of time, but can be done, yeah? Once again, hand cut with my Fordham. Done. Carbide ball burrs, three different sizes, and then uh, the cleanup happened with um, fine gray diamond ball burrs, which is not that expensive. I was pleasantly surprised. So that was it. Uh, give me a call. You want to ask for any advice? Give me a call. Yeah. Uh, well, rather send me a WhatsApp. <laughs> yes, it does, man. Please be, sir. Please be. Bo, you're in the, the UK at the moment, right? Excellent, brother. No, the, the Integral I haven't e-treated yet. Um, so there's that. That's what we did previously. So there's the Integral. Um, the clay is on it. And that is it. She's now dry to the touch. Uh, but if I put it on my cheek, I can still feel moisture in there. I'm not going to lick this one. But there we go. So we'll heat treat that tomorrow. I'm not taking my cameras as a rig into the, the uh, smithy anymore. So uh, I'll probably record that on my cell phone. And then uh, play it back to you guys. Because I can now do that. Yeah. But there we go. So that's the weird ass pattern we came up with. And we'll see how that e-treats. Um, the clay is ordinary stove putty. So nothing funky, nothing. It's a very fine refractory cement. Done. Yeah. Uh, who else is in here? Who's saying what? Brother, yes, we can. I've actually got um, Jack coming over next week somewhere. But we do have a, a hectic week scheduled. So um, please just let me know when you come through so I can... Uh, um, either schedule time or move the planned stuff that we have because we're going to be pouring uh, cement floor. So that kind of limits uh, my work. So once I pour the floor, I can't get to my smithy. Yeah, which is kind of, that's what I'm saying. Chat to me. Excellent, excellent. Thanks, brother. I am hoping, I'm having fun with that one. Uh, so for the guys that didn't follow or don't follow the build, um, don't know where we're at. So on this one, let's put the dagger aside Yeah. So on the side of my bench, I have got an extremely large mouse pad. And that's where all the projects live. That is Luan. My son, that's one of his blades that he's busy with. And, uh, and obviously this. So, so that is Arizona Desert Ironwood Scales. So let's do that here. Yeah. Arizona Desert Ironwood Scales that have now been uh, formed. Two foot, let me just take that cam off, man. Oh, wrong way. Damn it. So, sorry, Trent. I'm going to have to drop your comment, buddy. Peter, how's it going, man? Thanks, buddy. It's appreciated. So, that one there. So let's just get high up so that I don't bump my noggin. So, that there. Uh, we've got the scales, which I've now rounded, which now slip in there. Yeah. And that is a 99.9% .9 flat fit. So if I hold that up to the light, I'm not seeing any gaps. Yeah. There is a slight variation there. 
but that is pre-ground. So pre heat so I still need to clean this up. As you can see, there are gouge marks in there. So this still needs to be, be cleaned up, that little section there. And obviously, once this is heat treated, then I'm going to be re-grinding everything. So I don't want to do too much of a, a pre-fit. That's why the scales aren't drilled yet. But they have been, uh, been fitted up on both sides. Yeah. So done. And uh, I mean, Vaughn brought me some uh, checkering files today. Same thing on this side. Same same issue, but on the sides and the flip, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, but so Vaughn bought me a good mate, Mr. Vaughn Ball, fellow bladesmith. He bought me some, brought me a box full of uh, checkering files. It's an entire freaking box full. Yeah, so there is a whole load of them. And uh, our first little test thing. And I can tell you what, it's not as easy as it seems. Um, so I first cut straight lines, which was difficult in itself, and then just picked an angle. And between me and him, we dug this thing out. It's fully hollow there. Yeah. Um, so then I started playing with uh, spacing. Oh, come on. Now she doesn't want to focus again. I started playing with spacing there. I just cut an arbitrary line and did the spacing and the, the last odd six came out perfectly look at that so the last couple i'd say from about there they started getting even so i realized that you can't try to finish the cut before you start doing the next one yeah and here you can see how we overlapped and screwed up in the middle blah 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 and my diamonds are uh, more squares than anything else yeah, and this is, uh, what is this? This is snake bean, which is a brilliant freaking wood, but it's an off-cut piece. Um, so I just squared it up. And then we've got wild olive, which we haven't played with yet. A nice curly one. And then uh, some African blackwood, which I just flattened out. So uh, although I won't be using African blackwood, because that's now CITES 3 classified, and I can't ship internationally. So yeah, there's a box full of these things. Um, excluding my personal little set, which I bought uh, quite a while ago. Yeah, and for the guys that uh, want to know how old this little book is, look at that price, South African guys. That's seven rand something for this little fundamentals of gun stock checkering little book. But anyway, so uh, and there is the paperwork that came with it. And this I bought off a, uh, a guy, I can't remember, but this is a couple of years ago, and it's only three, but with tools and the whole thing. And then a little sticker in the box saying, no, you didn't get robbed off or knocked off. There is only three in this kit. Yeah, so. But yeah, I've uh, had this for probably six, five or no, not five or six years. I've probably had this for about, yeah, about five years, and I haven't played with it yet. So now I've got quite a selection, and I think it's time I start playing. But anyway, so, yeah, that, that might happen on there, although I do not want to screw up $140 worth of scales. Um, so might might not. Who knows? I don't know. This is the play project, yeah? And then on the uh, copper wrap on that, that was a stupid idea. Um, but it turned out fairly cool. It took me an entire fucking day to get this right and it still has work and now I don't want to scrape off the clay and I don't want to kind of bend this thing out of the way but I'll need to work over here so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing come come This is obviously going to take a while. Come on, man. There we go. 
And there we go. And then I've got uh, two very, very, very small temporary pins that go in there. They keep everything nice and snug. But that is the idea, the look, the whatever. So let me put this down. And I'll bring the camera in so it can do her little focus thing. Yeah. So that is the idea. I'll tell you one thing. That took a while to get in there. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that, that was, or uh, well, that is the two projects. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, once again for popping in. Let's pull that camera out of the way. Um, that's it for me. Let's see what is, who's saying what. Uh, Mr. Smith. He's back in. Yeah, well, it, he didn't give them to me. Um, he has got a weird-ass project in mind. So he bought this out of a estate sale done in Durban somewhere. So a gunsmith, gunsmith that's retiring or passed on. or I, I don't know the, the full story. I didn't really ask. I was just flabbergasted. Um, but he bought these things, and it's now a couple of weeks later he got them. Um, and he... He drove out today uh, to go and pick them up. And on his way back, he was passing my place. And he's, like, well, I'm normally teaching a class on Saturday. So he pops in, which he normally does um, at least twice a, a month on a Saturday um, as he's passing. But anyway, so there's no class. There's no nothing. So we, we kind of just hung up. Um, and uh, the only thing I wanted to do today was just play up this blade. Yeah. So with Vaughn here and, and me being kind of all over the place and him not helping, um, we started playing with these things, and he said, uh, "Well, okay, keep this, uh, but but I can't have it because I offered to buy it from him." And then he said, "No, no, you you can keep them, but he's gonna he's gonna borrow them back at one point to go and finish his project." So, yeah, it's it's kind of on a semi permanent loan to me. Um, I don't know. Um, my myself and Vaughn's relationship is pretty much the same as as. Stuart, as me and yours relationship, yeah? We're in a perceptual state of trade or borrow or, uh, yeah? Uh, so Vaughn will buy a machine and he doesn't have space for it and he just sends it to my place. There's three. There's a, a Bridgeport overhead mill, a big-ass thing with two DROs and a blah, 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 blah that's just standing here. There is a three-phase wooden lathe that's standing here. There is also a uh, um, Colchester um uh lathe that is standing here that's all all his uh there's also two big ass drill presses um of his that is just standing in my shop it looks like i've got a lot of tools but it's not mine yeah so i don't mind <laughs> you can you want to check her the, the right nut then Uh, no, Trent, uh, there's quite a few guys that asked me uh, about the, the fast quenching. Well, no, I don't have. Uh, will I restock? Uh, the thing is, I need to order 210 liters, so a full drum of the stuff uh, when I do order. Um, so uh, for the three or four guys that want five liter each, no. Um, I'm not going to put money in. I'm no longer in the consumable game. Uh, KMTS, or even better, support a, uh, a fellow knife maker. Um, Mr. Stan Ohowski down in Cape Town. So let me know. I'll send you his details. Yeah. Stan is quick, man. Stan is really quick. Done. Um, and I'd much rather support him than one of the bigger guys. Yeah. Mark, what are we watching? Well, you're watching me because apparently you don't have anything else to do. And, and I don't look at the camera. I keep on reading comments. Yeah. So it, it looks like I'm kind of doing this. But anyway, so that was it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We're going to pop all up. And uh, show you again, just for the guys that now join. Mark, this is specifically for you, buddy. Show you what we've been up to. Yeah. Uh, so let's bring in the red cam. Do your thing. That's what it looks like now. And this is what it looks like looked like before. So that was just past me finishing it. That's where we're at now. Patina. Yeah. Love the stuff. And just from moving it on my bench. 
It's got a bit of scratching on there and a scratching on there. I like it. I like it, but I'd never tighten anything up until it is ready for sale or permanent fixture. Yeah, so that's purely just for uh, handling and admiring. But anyway, and that's why you've got the soft and squishy stuff on the side of the bench. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Thank you for joining me, Mark. You're on page now, brother. Trent. Cheers, bro. Once again, guys, have a good evening. Thank you for joining me. And uh, let's work out or go out with the, the, the fucking fiery thingy countdown.